there are a series of problems that you can solve if you know about um, how the sum of the roots or the sum of the roots taken two at a time or three at a time or four at a time relates to the coefficients. An example of this is if you have a polynomial like x cubed minus 2x squared plus, and we don't even know this coefficient, kx plus 18. And they want to know the roots of this polynomial, which seems pretty impossible since k could be pretty much anything. But they give us an extra piece of information, which in this case, uh, they tell us that one root is the negation of one of the others. So this means instead of having p, q, and r as the three roots, my roots are p minus p and r. There are other things we can call them, but so now we're down to just two things. Now we have a couple of numbers. We have the 18 and the minus 2. Um, the minus 2 is related to the sum of the roots and the 18 is related to the product of the roots. So I'm going to say that the sum of the roots, p plus minus p plus r, is always the opposite of whatever the coefficient of the second biggest exponent is, so it's positive 2. And from this, we already know that one of the three roots is 2. Now, the other roots have to be negations of each other. That's where this other number comes in. 18, so this is the sum negative sum of the roots taken one at a time. This is the sum of the, this is negative sum of the roots taken one at a time. This is the sum of the roots taken two at a time. And this is negative sum of the roots taken three at a time. In other words, product of the roots. The three roots are p minus p. R is already known to be two. So I get minus p minus two p squared equals negative eighteen. And p is equal to plus or minus three. So the three roots are three negative 3 and 2. And then they might ask, what's k? Well, k is the sum of the roots taken 2 at a time. So now I could just do 3 times minus 3 plus 3 times 2 plus minus 3 times 2. And we get negative, uh, negative 9 for k. So that's one configuration. But there's a few more. Actually, let me do that first question again, but this time the k is over here. So again, we have p1 plus my, this is one root's and negation of another is given. I'll write q equals negative p. So r equals 2, but this time I can't use this. I have to use this negative 9. So negative 9 is the sum of the roots taken 2 at a time. So it's p times minus p plus p times 2 plus negative p times 2. In other words, p squared equals 9, p equals plus or minus 3. And then k in this case is the negative product of the roots, so it's 3 times minus 3 times 2 is 18. So it's like the same question, but in the other one, the k wasn't, the other k, k was a different unknown. Okay, a couple of more configurations. In this one, x cubed minus 8x squared plus 21x plus k. It's not enough information until they tell us the two roots are equal. So that means instead of p, q, and r, I have p, p, and r. Now, this one's this is actually a much harder question. So the minus 8 is p plus p plus r equals positive 8, or 2p plus r equals 8, or r is equal to 8 minus 2p. Can't do much with that on its own. This 21 is the sum of the roots taken 2 at a time, so p times p plus p times r, plus the other p times r, is equal to 21. 
In other words, p squared plus 2pr is equal to 21. Now, we can replace r with 8 minus 2p. Now I have an equation that just has p in it, although it's confusing. 16p minus 4p squared equals 21. It eventually turns into 3p squared minus 16p plus 21 equals 0. Now it's not easy to factor this, but it does factor into 3p minus 7 and to p minus 3. They'd have to tell us that p is an integer. Otherwise, there's two answers for this question. So p equals 7. I'm going to reject this guy just because they told us that. So there's 7, 7. Then we can plug 7 into here to get r. r equals 8 minus 2 times 7. 8 minus 14 is negative 6. Oh, sorry, that's not a 7. That's a very messy 3. 8 minus 2 times 3 is 2. That's a 3 here. So the roots are 3, 3, and 2. K is the negative sum of the roots taken 3 at a time, otherwise known as the negative product of the roots. 3 times 3 times 2 equals negative 18. In this one, the given information is that one of the roots is the sum of the other two. So, the sum of all three roots, p plus q plus r, is positive 10. It's the opposite of that. But p plus q is r, so r plus r equals 10, or 2r equals 10, or r equals 5. So I have one of the roots. Then I have to use this negative 30. Uh, negative 30, or positive 30, I should say, is the product of the roots. So it's p times q times 5. Now here comes a kind of sneaky trick here. We know that r is 5, so I can take this thing and say that p plus q plus 5 equals 10, or p plus q equals 5, or q equals 5 minus p. So I can come over here and say 5 minus p times 5. And this becomes 25 p minus 5p squared if I divide everything by 5 and this becomes p squared minus 5p plus 6 equals 0 which factors to p minus 2 p minus 3 equals 0 so p can be 2 or 3 so if p is 2 q is 3 if p is 3 q is 2 and r is the sum of them. As far as k goes, that's the sum of the roots taken two at a time. So 2 times 3 plus 2 times 5 plus 3 times 5 is 15 plus 10 is 25 plus 6 is 31. Okay, in the last configuration for this lesson, there's a couple of more configurations in the next lesson, but in this one, we have 3x squared minus 6, 3x cubed, sorry, minus 16x squared plus kx minus 6. And in this one, we have our three roots, but one of them is the reciprocal of one of the others. So I'll say q is equal to 1 over p. So for this one, I'm going to use the minus 6. Minus 6 is the negative product of the roots, or the sum of the roots taken 3 at a time. So 6 is equal to p times 1 over p times r, and the p's cancel out, so r equals 6. Very quickly, I have the value of, um, oops, I made a mistake, though. It's, this 3 is here, don't, don't forget about that guy. It's this coefficient divided by, if there is one there, that equals the negative sum of the roots. So r is actually equal to 2. Now, 
we can say that the, the negative 16 over 3, or sorry, regular 16 over 3, is the sum of the roots, which are p plus 1 over p plus 2, because we already figured out this 2 from here. And I'll multiply everything by 3 just to get this thing going. 3p plus 3 over p plus 6. Multiply everything by p now. 16p equals 3p squared plus 3 plus 6p. Bring the 16p over. Get minus 10p plus 3. This thing factors to... Uh, 3p minus 1 and p minus 3 and we get p equals 3 or p equals 1 third. That's okay because p and q had to be reciprocals of each other so 3 and 1 third or the other way it doesn't matter. r we already figured out was 2 and to get the value of k, don't forget about this 3, it's k over 3 is equal to the sum of the roots taken 2 at a time which is 3 times 1 third plus 3 times 2, plus 2 times 1 third. It ends up becoming 23. Okay, so those are a bunch of configurations for when you have an equation with missing coefficient, but you're told that one of the roots is either the negation of another, or one of the roots is equal to the other, or the sum of two roots is equal to a third one, or that the one root is reciprocal of another. In the next video, there's going to be two more final configurations.